Scientific collaboration across geopolitical divides is needed now more than ever. Yasa Research continues to use the power of systems analysis to bring together scientists from around the globe to find holistic solutions to issues of global concern. The Institute's 50th anniversary provides a perfect moment to take stock of its achievements as we look to the future. If I should choose one word, I would say change maker. Bridge building. Surprising. Global, path-breaking and comprehensive. Network. Excellence. Complex. Vital. EASA is an institution that represents some 56 countries and we really are getting to the point where we have a truly global reach in terms of both the staff complement, the skills that they bring to the institution and therefore the potential scientific advice that we can offer to people right around the world. EASA has incredibly interesting history. It was founded 1972, 50 years ago. It is an institute that is unique Importantly, that it's not subject to any national political agenda. It's been uh, the product of science diplomacy, and that's what is, in fact, also written into the kind of genetic code of YASA. And uh, in these days, what more would we need than science diplomacy? We are an international research organization, and I think uh, one of our main um, assets are the national member organizations around the world and that we can through systems analysis and to a more integrated approach to different world problems build a bridge between different countries and also um, build a scientific bridge and, and provide information as a basis to have discussions. System science brings together different aspects, different processes, different actors in order to get a more holistic picture of a certain research question or a policy concern. We tackle a very complex issue in an integrated way. We approach from the social science, natural science, mathematical science and also like technological science. I would say that we're starting always from problem, then working towards the solutions. We are doing this science for a better life. So we bridge the gap between science and policy, and this interaction between science and policy is very important. We got to talk not only with scientists, but also with policymakers, with practitioners, with NGOs. So you got different options, like different directions to do research. Science has global standards. Scientists around the world essentially speak the same language. And there is no other community in the world that does it. So it's a very powerful force for improving the human condition. Through that function, it really greatly contributes to the benefit of humankind, to the further advance of human well-being on this planet. I think it would be key to increase or keep the systemic approach uh, to, to the global challenges that we have, because we see more and more that the interconnections that exist between the different challenges are becoming more important, whether it has to do with climate change, with conflicts, with uh, migration, health shocks, issues of justice. The world currently has many challenges and we know that scientific insights are, are necessary but not sufficient. So what we actually really need is to foster public engagement through participatory approaches to science. For example, citizen science or, or participatory driven science where society and scientists work together to develop common solutions. This is the science that we need in the 21st century uh, in order to facilitate sustainable development, in order to bring prosperity to all parts of the world. I think science really has a crucial role to play. Everybody should be delighted that the IASA is turning 50. I think the fact that the IASA has been around for that long and has made a significant impact already at the global community in terms of its policy work. The heydays from the 70s, from the acid rain research to today where we're influencing significantly the climate conversations, the biodiversity conversations that are happening. These things are critical to ensure that we have a dignified future for humanity. The approach begins when first you see the world through the eyes of another.